So we're going to be talking about the differences between solids, liquids, and gases. Solids have their particles tightly packed. They have a definite shape and a definite volume. They usually have a very high density. The only exception to solids being the most dense is water, because ice floats. They expand only slightly when needed, and they're almost incompressible. When I press on a book, it doesn't get any smaller. The particles are always vibrating. Liquids have a definite volume, but not a definite shape. They're less dense than solids, again, with the exception being water. They take the shape of the container. They slide past each other. They expand a little more than solids when heated, but it's still not very much. And again, liquids are almost incompressible. Gas particles do not touch each other because they're so far apart. There's no definite shape or volume. They have a very low density because the particles are so spread out. They take the shape and the volume of the container. Gases do expand greatly when heated. That's why aerosol can say keep away from heat. And they're very compressible. Again, you can compress them because they're so spread out. Here we can see what solid ice looks like. Notice the molecules are in the solid form, but they still jiggle in place. Liquid water, more movement. They're flowing around each other, while water vapor the molecules are constantly in motion and they're spaced very far apart. The graph on the left is a phase diagram. Some key pieces that you need to recognize. We have solids, liquids, and gas sections. Solid is always lowest temperature, highest pressure. Gases are low pressure, high temperature, and liquids are in the middle. In A, we're going from, in A, we're going from a solid the liquid. That's called melting. In B, we're going from a liquid to a solid, so freezing. C is a gas to a liquid. Liquid to gas. Gas to solid. And finally, solid to gas. The triple point is where all three phases coexist. And this line, we would have solid and liquid. On this line, liquid and gas, solid and gas. The critical point is the point in which a gas cannot be liquefied by just increasing the pressure. The molecules have too much kinetic energy. They're moving too fast. You have to lower the temperature before it can turn into a liquid. Some other things that you should know from the graph is if we had a point here, and we wanted to turn that into a liquid, we could increase the pressure. We could also decrease the temperature or a combination of the two. Finally, you need to know where standard temperature and pressure is zero degrees Celsius or one ATM. Whenever something says normal boiling point, you're gonna look for standard pressure. So on this first one, 
Here's one ATM. Boiling would occur between liquid and gas. So following that down, my boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. Normal melting point, again, one ATM, follow it down, and that's zero degrees Celsius. Another type of graph you'll need to be able to read is a heating curve. Let's label the pieces of your heating curve. First, we have solid on the first slant. So the first slope is solid, the second slope is liquid, the third slope is gas. So going from solid to liquid is melting and liquid to solid freezing. Liquid to gas vaporization, condensation gas to liquid. So on the graph, this is where melting would start. This is where melting would end. Or going in the reverse direction, this is where freezing would start. And this is where freezing would end. So on all of your straightaways, you have phase changes. And on all of the slopes, you have a state of matter. Endothermic wind is when energy is absorbed from the surroundings. And so the container is going to feel cold. It occurs when the atoms are getting further apart. Because it takes energy to pull them apart. So melting and vaporization are endothermic processes. Exothermic is when energy is released into the surroundings. And so the container usually feels hot. This occurs when atoms are getting closer together. So whenever it's condensating or freezing, we're removing energy, and so that's exothermic. You can't think feels cold, feels hot with processes, only really reactions. Make sure you know which processes are endothermic and which ones are exothermic. To help you remember, remember that endothermic takes energy to pull them apart. Exothermic is going to release energy when they get closer together. 